Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about Cisco's dialed number analyzer that's part of Unified Communications Manager. This is a pretty handy tool when you're trying to troubleshoot uh, where calls are being routed to or how they're being manipulated by translation patterns and so forth. Uh, so let's uh, let's dive into it. First, we, we need to actually ensure the dialed number analyzer is activated on our, our server. To do that, we'll go to the Unified Serviceability option. This is um, can be found in the upper right-hand corner. You want to select Cisco Unified Serviceability. Hit Go. You'll come to a screen that looks something like this. Cisco's Unified Serviceability. You want to go to Tools and Service Activation. Once you're in the Service Activation menu, you will see something like what I have on screen here now. Uh, a list of services. Some will be enabled, some will not. You've probably already been in this setting if you have Communications Manager running because a number of these services you have to turn on to get the system up and running uh, in the first place. There's two in particular we want to talk about. That is the Cisco Dialed Number Analyzer Server and the Dialed Number Analyzer. Uh, if not selected already, check both of these boxes and hit Save give the system a little bit of time to get those services activated and away you go. Next, jump to the URL that I have here. You want to put the IP address of your Unified Communications Manager slash DNA, which stands for Dialed Number Analyzer. Once you key that in, it's going to take us to the home page and we'll see essentially what we have on the screen right now. If you come to the Analysis tab, there's a number of different ways to analyze calls by the dialed numbers. I find that the Analyzer is probably the most flexible and the easiest to use. So let's open that up. You can also analyze from the perspective of a phone, from a trunk, so on and so forth. Uh, in this case, we kind of build out the configuration ourselves. So calling party number, you can actually put this in. Uh, key this in, mainly if you're looking at how a calling party number is going to be uh, you know, translated or transformed, you'll definitely want to have that correct. If we're looking at the number as it's dialed, this isn't quite as important. So the dialed digit settings are going to be next. I'm going to choose 1, 2, 3, 4 and enter that. From a calling search space perspective, this is very important. We'll use the Lancaster full access calling search space. There is time zone. This can be very important when doing anything with time of day routing in Unified Communications Manager. So if if this is in fact at play, you want to ensure this is all correct. Also the, the time, uh, you can key in a specific time as to simulate the call. In this case we'll keep those basics there because that's not terribly important at this example. We'll hit do analysis and we'll get some results back. First thing to notice the summary calling party information you'll see that 1000 that was who we were calling as. We'll see the partition and the line calling search space. The dial digits 1234 we do see that this pattern is routed, right? It is routed. If the digits failed to route, we'll actually get that message here as well. So we know right away if the call actually would complete or would ring through uh, and if there is a pattern associated with it. We can see the matching pattern information and expand that. In this case, we see a E164, a plus E164 number was ultimately what was matched. Now we typed in uh, four digits and we got the plus E164 number so we know that we can look down through here a bit further and see some more details. As we go through we'll see the time information, we'll see it is an on net call, um, no interdigit timeout was hit, so on and so forth. Uh, the call flow is very important to understand mm -hmm. what type of um, you know what type of processing was done to the call. So let's expand this. Okay, this is starting to make more sense. How did we go from a four-digit number to a plus E164 number? There was a translation pattern. 
So we can open both of these just to get the full perspective. We see that the called party number is been changed or has been changed. Right? So pre-transform calling party, or I'm sorry, called party number, and the called party mask. This is applied, and then we get ultimately get our called party number to where the call is then officially delivered to. In this case, it is on net, so we have a resource here that we can see exactly where the call ended up. The directory number of plus one seven one seven five 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 one two three four. This is assigned to a device, a Cisco 8845, and we can expand this the whole way down to the specific device name and so forth. We can even see some other additional information as it relates to that device. So we can see the call the whole way from its initial dial to how the number is transformed and to where it will ultimately be delivered to. Had this been an external number, we would have saw the, uh, the, the um, trunk that it, that it goes out of. Sorry about that. The trunk that the call is ultimately sent out and, um, you know, go from there. Hopefully you found this helpful. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon.